Hello! So I wanted to talk about directing quickly because directing is one of those things where if you haven't done a lot of it, if you haven't directed talent to try and get the kind of performance that you're looking for a lot, then it can be nerve wracking. If you've ever been horse riding and you don't really know what you're doing or you've got a horse that has a real temperament to it, you've kind of had the experience of what can happen when a session goes wrong, which is the animal senses that there's no, there's no foundation, there's no clear direction here, there's no, there's no intent behind what's happening, and they kind of panic a little bit and go off in their own, go off in their own direction. And I've definitely had sessions as a talent where I have realized, I've sensed that the director doesn't necessarily have a clear vision of what they're looking for. And that can be, especially if you are a little unsure about the project's brief or where the performance should go, that can be really nerve wracking for talent. Because you get this sudden impression of, oh, hang on a minute, whatever I'm delivering, it, it may not actually be what they're looking for. They don't really know what they're looking for. So I don't know if I'm doing a good job or not. And so you can kind of end up in your own head, which is not where you want to go because a directed session at its best is a collaboration between two people. And there is nothing better when they're firing on all pistons, both performer and director in their zone doing their thing. It's just, it's an absolute delight. But it can be a little bit tricky to get there. So today I wanted to give you just two specific tips that might help if you need to direct talent and you've had less experience with it. So first of all, let's talk about verbs. There is this great quote from Ethan Hawke where he says, verbs are everything, adjectives are for critics. And let's unpack a little bit why that's useful. There is a, another point that Judith Weston makes in, makes in Directing Actors, which is an incredible book, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a second, where she says that one of the reasons why, as a performer, you should be engaged with, if you are on stage or on film and working against a scene partner or an opposite, you're delivering dialogue to someone, you should be engaged with them and checking in because there is something that you're trying to elicit some sort of change in the reason why you're speaking your dialogue. And that basically goes to the core of why verbs are useful. There's always an end effect that we're trying to have by opening our mouth and delivering a line. And in order to get a really specific and an evocative performance, we need to kind of pick apart, what is it? Like, what is the thing that we're trying to do? I'm gonna provide a link in the notes for not only the books I'm gonna talk through here, but also Pat Fraley has an incredible course, which is one of the first places that I ran into this idea. And if I'm remembering it correctly, he has this great example of a drill sergeant belittling someone on the parade ground. Now the problem with emotions or the problem with adjectives, if we describe something that we can't really get a good performance out of that. If we say that the drill sergeant is angry then if you try and play angry, that just becomes demonstrative. It just becomes showy. There's nothing behind it. What's the drill sergeant trying to do? If he's trying to make the private, who has a sloppy uniform, feel small, if he's trying to demean them, guides the performance a certain way. If he's trying to intimidate them, if he's trying to put the fear of God into this person and make sure that this never happens again, then intimidating is a very different performance as well. Verbs are a great through line to getting what you're looking for, to getting the kind of performance that you need. If a given direction for a line, if a performance isn't working, then you can adjust. What is the actual intent that we're looking for? Because oftentimes different words will mean different things to different performers. And so you can kind of work together to find what's the language that's really gonna get the actor hot on this moment. So verbs are a really great shorthand to getting to the kind of language that you want, for getting the kind of performance that you want. Find a verb for the particular line, for the particular piece of dialogue you need your talent to deliver that gets an evocative performance that describes what is the actual underlying intent. And there's a great resource for this. I'm just gonna go through my books here 
uh, time and time and time again, I will recommend Damon Swade's Activate. It is incredible because it is a whole bunch of synonyms for different verbs. So for flee, there is then a paragraph that provides avert, avoid, ban, bar, blow, bolt, break, bypass, a whole bunch of different specific breakdowns for flee, alternatives that were things that are in that wheelhouse. And the thing that I found out recently, and this is the thing that I think is really useful for, for uh, creative work, especially in the genre space, it has a genre section. You can go through and go, okay, what are, what are a bunch of really good uh, descriptors for humor or for paranormal and urban fantasy or for thrillers or westerns or science fiction? It is fantastic for that because it gives you a bunch of ideas. I use this in my regular workouts for Taverna Voices. Uh, when we're doing character online workouts, if I reach a point where I'm like, mm, I'm not quite sure where this should go, then I will take a second to actually leaf through the book and go, hang on a minute, let's find a verb, let's find a clear verb for what we're looking for here because something's not quite working right now. There are other resources that you can use for the same thing. There is Actions, the Actors Thesaurus, which comes recommended as well. Uh, the benefit for that is that is intended to be actable, whereas the verbs in Activator are more intended for literary work, but I've found that I've found that Activate is great. Like I recommend Act Activate first and foremost, but you know, your mileage may vary. So, verbs. Why do we use them? Because it gives us a specific action that is trying to be played. Emotion is showy, demonstrative, it lands a little bit clunky, but a verb gets us really specific, gets some really juicy performance out of things. Specificity is always key for a great performance. Now, tip number two, because I don't want to keep you for too long, let's talk about as ifs. So, Let's go through a scenario. You are directing talent and the character that they're performing needs to enter the tomb of Neshrak, which is an ancient evil, a necromancer that was the scourge of the realm a thousand years before. And there's a cult that is attempting to resurrect Neshrak. One of the 12 seals of Neshrak's tomb has been broken. And that means that powerful necromantic energy is going to scourge, is going to flay whoever enters the tomb. So you want from the performance that the talent is giving, where they're saying a few lines to themselves, it's dialogue that is kind of informative for the player as the character enters the tomb to give an, un to give an understanding of the fact you don't want to stay in here for too long because it's going to hurt. So if you have a situation like that, you can unpack all of that lore for your performer, for the talent. You can explain to them the situation, this is what's happening, blah, 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 blah. And then you can get the kind of performance that you're looking for out of them. What I tend to prefer as a shortcut is looking for an as if. What is a real world analogy? What is a real world scenario that the talent will be more immediately familiar with or can relate to quickly that gives them the same the same kind of idea so in a situation like that directing them i would say instead okay it's kind of like you're entering an unsealed nuclear reactor like there is very there is very clear danger here your geiger counter is not going crazy but it's there's definitely background residual radiation there now the reason why i recommend the reason why i recommend something like this and to be fair this is only my opinion. Different studios work different ways. I've worked with clients who much prefer to give me the law. And I'm not saying that's a bad situation at all or that I am ungrateful for when that's happened for me as a talent at all. But I think that time is at a premium. And what you want to do is you want to get the most value out of the time that you have with your talent. And I think the best way to do that is to condense down the information that they need to that they need to keep in their head to then be able to provide you the performance that you need. Now, it's not always the case, but keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as something to consider. 
And I think one of the real challenges when you are involved in a creative project is, and I've definitely seen this with teams that I've worked with, you have so much of it in your head, so much of it that you are thinking through on a daily basis that it can often be hard to step outside of a situation like that, to actually stop for a moment and go, oh, hang on a minute. So what does the actor really need to know here? What, is, what do we need to provide from the actor's perspective? It can be tricky to consider that when this is the world, when this really is the soup that you're swimming in on a daily basis. So keep as ifs in mind as a handy tool. What is the way that we can condense down? What are the things that the actual talent needs to know? So if there's a situation, for example, where they're feeling very bolstered and their morale is rallied, you might not need to go through what are all of the game design reasons as to why that happens. What are the scenarios that that happens in? You just need them to know that in this moment in time, they are feeling like they could take on the whole empire single-handed. They are feeling great. And then go from there. Now, that's a little bit of a bastardization of the concept of as ifs and how Judith Weston uses them in directing actors. Just to geek for a second, there is this incredible example where she talks about creating a very tense dinner scenario with a family. So it's a very dysfunctional family. And the example that she provides is, well, what if you give the actors the as if of the first person to make a mistake in this dinner scenario is gonna get shot. It's brilliant. It creates the, it creates the tension and that, that real frigidity that you want out of that kind of scene. But as ifs, as an analog for your game's lore or for your world's lore, as a way of condensing down and creating a situation that the actor can get to quickly, I think is a really powerful tool. Now, if you do find yourself in a situation where you've got a direct talent in the near future or you're working with voiceover talent and you want to find out a little bit more about what can be involved in that or you just want to feel a little bit more confident about the process, I'm here to help. There is a link down with this video where you can reach out and book a consult. I'm here to help. I love making you and your project sound extraordinary. If you wanted to do some digging on your own, I cannot recommend the texts that I have popped up in this video enough. There are affiliate links along with this video for each of those titles as well if you want to pick them up and have a read through. Hopefully those two tips help. So remember, verbs as something that is concretely playable and as ifs as a way of reducing the mental burden on your talent to be able to actually picture what it is that's going on and what they need to know to give you the performance that you need. See you soon.